Well, hey there. Uh, today we're going to talk about benchmark fractions. This is actually going to go pretty quick. This is more of just a connection and understanding of like what we know about fractions. And ultimately, this is going to kind of help us around estimation or maybe even rounding. Um, it's more so a number sense, just kind of getting to know these. So uh, again, should be kind of a quick run through. Um, so let's dive in. So benchmark fractions. We think about those fractions on a number line. So that's going to be the first part to really think about. And benchmark really just means kind of like a guidance, like where are some major areas that I can be thinking about. So, you know, if we're thinking about fractions, of course, being less than one, because they're part of the whole. So our number line would be like zero through one. And then we think about what we call some of these benchmarks. So our first major one is one half. That's the middle, right? That's where we find it directly in the middle, half of it. So that is one benchmark fraction. So maybe over here, we'll just say benchmark. Hi, benchmark. So one half is a benchmark we like to use, benchmark fraction. We also then look at what we consider the quarters. So that would be when we break things into fourths, so we have one fourth. We also have two fourths, which is actually one half. And that's actually part of understanding benchmarks is what fractions are equivalent to a half. And then three fourths. So other benchmarks in there are the fourths. And then it depends. Um, we'll go with one fourth. We'll use the unit fractions up there. And then um, at times you can refer to what we consider the thirds, which uh, is like here, is that about three pieces? I'm just trying to like make sure that's a nice even three. Yeah, that looks good. Just want to make sure it's spaced out. Um, so you also can think about thirds or one third as a benchmark. So one third, two third. Uh, what's also crazy, I guess, out here is this would also be three thirds. Well, it's not crazy. We've talked about this in class. So I don't even know why I said that was crazy. Um, two out of two. And then would that use purple? Four out of four. So the whole concept of this is just kind of like understanding where these benchmarks are and then where other fractions are in relation to them. So maybe we can recreate that on this page and kind of talk about that concept. So if I understand these major benchmark fractions, so zero and one, and then we said one of them, wait, maybe I should make sure I use the same color. So orange for the half. Uh, so one of them, you know, being the direct half, and then I think we use purple for the quarters force and then yellow. Yeah, that looks about good. Sorry, I'm always like worried about my uh my my thirds on a number line, just making sure everything's kind of equal. I guess that middle piece is a little bit bigger. But anyway, so these would be our benchmarks and then we could kind of think about well where do they lie? Or where do other fractions lie? Like where would they be in terms of these benchmarks? Uh, I guess I should also mention that part of our benchmarks also are the anchors of our number line, zero and one. So I guess it's not always a benchmark fraction, but more of a benchmark on a number line. Huh. There you go. So everything I just said at the beginning kind of is true. So I don't know. Let's just take something into uh, an example here, and let's just take a fraction. Let's do something like six eighths, right? So the whole idea of understanding benchmarks is like, where does six eighths kind of lie? Like, where is it closest to? So one thing that we like to think about first is understanding that concept of the half, right? And the whole part about the half is that the numerator is actually half of the denominator as well. That's why on any number line, uh, when we're thinking about place value, it's you always have the five in the middle, whether it's five tenths, or whether it's five itself. If you're talking between zero and 10, 
or maybe it's 50. Uh, wait, I swear I'm writing. Let's try that again. Maybe it's 50, it's 100, right? That's like always right in the middle. So the same thing with our fractions is like, we know we have half when the numerator is half of the denominator. So one thing you could always do is kind of look at your first fraction here and say, okay, well, if it's eights, then half would be four eights. So six eights isn't really close to one half. It's a little bit bigger. So then you realize, okay, well, since it's bigger, I'm moving over here. So where would that benchmark be? Okay, and then, well, I don't know. I guess that puts us a little over here. Well, it doesn't, I mean, it really does. So then we can keep in mind that that's where this is. So if I kind of had to think about, oh, well, then if I wanted to round this fraction to what we consider our three major benchmarks, zero, half, or one, well, six eighths is the closest to one. So that's really what this is all about. And then again, it's nothing that like you need to like go deep into. It's just a good thing to help you think about the value of fractions as we start to estimate and think about things. So I don't know, let's, let's just do another one. And I'll clean up this number line a little bit so that it kind of flows a little bit better. So a benchmark is a zero. A uh, benchmark is a half. And then we could also say maybe we have that quarter and three quarters and then one third and then two thirds. Okay, so again, if we were to take another fraction, let's say like two tenths. Okay, well, let's first start thinking about that benchmark of half. Well, if this was half, it would have to be five tenths, right? Because it would be half of your denominator. So it's actually smaller. That just tells us right now. Like I can even do this. Wow, look at math. It's all coming together. It's actually smaller than, than a half. So I know that I'm then working this direction. So then if we think about, okay, well, where is that? Would that be closer to one fourth? Would it be closer to one half? Like it's definitely smaller, but where in this range is it? So then again, that's our understanding of numbers. And we might see this, we might not, but good thing about tenths is that can go back to our work with decimals. And what we know about decimals is our number line gets cut into 10 pieces. One, two, three, wow. Nope, let's try that again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right, that's two pieces or 10 pieces. And then this would be the second one. So it looks like it's it's close. Our benchmark is kind of close to one, one fourth. Which then if I even had to think about rounding maybe to the major benchmarks, I might say, oh, this is like zero because it's pretty close. It's closer to that. So that's really what benchmarks are all about. Um, it's nothing super crazy. It's just kind of understanding the sense of numbers. Let's just, let's just do one more. So I think the biggest takeaway from this, if you really want to think about what you get from a benchmark or a benchmark fraction, is an understanding really more so, I'd say, of the half. Um, Right, like that relationship to it. So again, let's just pick another fraction. Um, I don't know. What fraction do I want? We just did tens. Oh, uh, eights? No. Uh, yeah, sure. Sixes. Sure. Okay, let's do five, six. Sorry, that like took me so long to think about. So the first things first is always like, I really think you try to anchor it to the half benchmark and kind of see where it lies there. So we know if this was half, it would have to be three, six, right? Because again, half would be half, the numerator is half the denominator is half of it. Again, if that was a model and I had six pieces, well, half of it would be colored in and that's three pieces. Okay, so what we know here is at least this is larger than half. 
So we know we're not we're not in this range. So then the question is, it's somewhere between here and is it closer to the one than it is to the half? Well, again, we even have our model over here, but I'll draw another one. If we really think about that concept, five out of six, well, six is the whole. So five out of six is like really, it's a lot. It's almost all of it. So that really puts us, you know, like around here. So that benchmark is five, six is closest to one. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. Just a brief introduction. I think it's important that we at least know the word and we understand benchmarks and that's kind of where we go with it. And we'll talk more, we'll practice it. It will come, don't worry, it's just an introduction. But if you at least can like out of this, think about, oh, how do I relate my fraction to the half, zero, and one, like, I think that would be a really good start. Like, where's on a number line, this fraction is the closest to what one of those benchmarks. And uh, that's it. I'm done. So you're done, I guess. <laughs> probably not. There's probably more work to be done. So we'll see you next time. And as always, thanks to you for your hard work. We appreciate you. You are wonderful. And we'll see you next time.